As mentioned before, the brain and brainstem develop from the neural tube, which initially differentiates into three primary vesicles, the prosencephalon, or forebrain, the mesencephalon, or midbrain, and the rhombencephalon, or hindbrain. These vesicles differentiate further into five secondary vesicles, the telencephalon, diencephalon, mesencephalon, metencephalon, and the myelencephalon. The adult derivatives of the telencephalon include the cerebral hemispheres, most of the basal ganglia, and the lateral ventricles. The diencephalon gives rise to the thalamus, hypothalamus, subthalamus, and epithalamus, which includes the pineal gland, the retina, the optic nerves, and the third ventricle. The mesencephalon gives rise to the midbrain and the cerebral aqueduct. The metencephalon gives rise to the pons, the cerebellum, and the fourth ventricle. Lastly, the myelencephalon gives rise to the medulla and fourth ventricle. With this brief overview of nervous system embryology, let's discuss the congenital abnormalities that you will need to be familiar with on the test. The first two are forebrain anomalies, anencephaly and hollow prosencephaly. Anencephaly, as we discussed prior, occurs when the rostral neuropore fails to close. If this occurs, the brain does not develop, and therefore this malformation is incompatible with life. Anencephaly should be on your differential if a second trimester pregnant female is found to have an elevated serum alpha-fetoprotein level, an elevation of amniotic fluid alpha-fetoprotein, and acetylcholinesterase, or if polyhydramnios is found on prenatal ultrasound. Hollow prosencephaly, on the other hand, is a common developmental anomaly of the human forebrain and midface due to an incomplete separation of the cerebral hemispheres. This malformation is thought to have a multifactorial etiology related to mutations in sonic hedgehog signaling pathway. It's associated with triploidy 13, or Patau syndrome, and other chromosomal abnormalities, including aneuploidy and several syndromes due to genetic mutations. The morbidity and mortality of this malformation depends on its severity. Affected fetuses often have only one ventricle within the telencephalon and can have various craniofacial malformations, with mild to moderately severe cases having cleft lips and palate, while the most severe cases can manifest with cyclopia, a single or partially divided eye. The next congenital malformation is spinal bifida, which, as mentioned prior, arises due to a failure of the caudal neuropore to close. There are four types. The first type is spina bifida occulta, which arises due to a failure of the vertebral laminae to fuse completely around the spinal cord. This is the mildest form and is asymptomatic, yet affected neonates have a characteristic tuft of hair on the skin overlying the defect. Maternal serum alpha-fetoprotein levels are not elevated in spina bifida occulta. The second type is spina bifida with meningocele. In this form, there is a failure of the vertebrae to form around the spinal cord, as well as a characteristic protrusion of the meninges through this vertebral defect. This form of spina bifida is associated with an increase in maternal alpha-fetoprotein levels. The next type is spina bifida with meningomyelocele, in which both the meninges and the spinal cord protrude through the vertebral defect. This form is also associated with an increase of maternal serum alpha-fetoprotein levels. The last type. Spina bifida with myeloschisis is also the most severe. In this form, the spinal cord can actually be seen externally and is associated with an increase of maternal serum alpha-fetoprotein levels. The next congenital malformation of the nervous system is the arnold chiari malformation, of which there are two types. Type 1 is the most common and is associated with a downward displacement of the cerebellar tonsils through the foramen magnum. This type is mostly asymptomatic. Type 2, on the other hand, is commonly symptomatic. It's associated with a downward displacement of the cerebellar vermis and medulla through the foramen magnum. This displacement causes a compression of the fourth ventricle, which results in obstructive hydrocephalus. It is also associated with thoracolumbar meningomyelocele and syringomyelia, with paralysis below the level of the lesion. 
The next congenital malformation is the Dandy Walker malformation, which arises due to a failure of the foramina of Lushka and Magendi to open, resulting in a dilation of the fourth ventricle. It's associated with agenesis of the cerebellar vermis and splenium of the corpus callosum, as well as with hydrocephalus and spinal bifida.